So, recently, there was a certain post on a certain website showing off a certain card. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about, is this card real or fake? And if I make any mistakes on this episode, including, you know, saying, in my opinion, if it's real or fake, uh, and I'm wrong, uh, make sure you blame Eddie, because it's always Eddie's fault. It's never mine. And, of course, a big thank you to Eddie for, you know, all the discussions on this card and for pointing out, you know, your reasons for thinking it's one or the other. Uh, and I'm gonna bring those up here in a bit. But yeah, now with all that said, after you blame Eddie in the comments below, let's jump into it. So this image came up on Reddit, which apparently shows off one of the Phyrexian Praetors and one that we have never seen before. I mean, we've seen another version before, uh, but you know, Elastor and Legion Machinist would be a brand new card that we've never seen from a brand new set. That of course we haven't seen any cards from either and unlike some other recent images i mean especially ones back in kamigawa this one is not blurry at all and it is quite crisp so yeah just looking at the actual card itself this looks like it's pretty legitimate you know when it comes to actually just seeing the card and saying yeah i mean this picture looks like a magic card right that being said when discussing whether this is real or not and my thoughts on it and actually eddie's thoughts as well there are a few things to take into account, not just, you know, how the card actually looks, but some of the things on the card as well, and just kind of the feel from the card itself too. Because recently, well, many of us, including myself, were fooled with a, you know, fake Shieldred, which was a pretty blurry image, and while this one is not, that does not mean that this is not a fake either. Overall, to me, I mean, the actual look of the card itself, if you just were to, you know, glance at it and not read anything, yeah, that looks like a magic card. This looks legitimate. That being said, Eddie did point out that it has been mentioned that someone has made a good point that apparently uh, the set number would be pretty low. So in the bottom right, uh, you know, 0, 10 out of 285, apparently that'd be a pretty low number. So that's probably an indication that this would not be legitimate, or at least it leans to the side that it would not be. Also, another thing pointed out is actually that this art itself is actually the key art for the set which I believe was revealed when they revealed, you know, the Dominator United, you know, initial stream as well. They actually showed off this art, which of course was not in the Dominator United set itself, but it was showing off, you know, a future set's key art, which is also somewhat coincidental that of course, you know, oh, okay, the key art comes out and then, you know, not too long after that, someone just happened to find the exact card that is utilizing that art. Now, is it possible? Yes unlikely but possible i mean we could have seen any other card from this set just randomly pop up that didn't utilize you know art that has already been shown so it is a bit suspect there and apparently when it comes to key art typically and again i do say typically because it's not always the case key art is not actually used on a card in the actual set itself it's just used as, you know, hey, showing off, you know, this set with just this key art. It typically doesn't actually appear on a card in the set. Now, again, is it possible that this is one of those exceptions? Yes. But with all those things considered, let's also just talk about what this card actually does and if it seems like it would actually be, you know, this new version of Elish Nord. And with that, just to make this slightly easier to discuss in this way, thank you, MTG.Design. I've made a custom version of this card. Elish Norn Legion Machinist is apparently a 2 4 Phyrexian Praetor with Vigilance that costs one white, white. She has, whenever their creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus plus one until end of turn. On top of that, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, then sorry, I just misspelled that. Whoops. Okay, anyway, still going. Creatures that player controls get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this does follow the format of the Praetors. Elish Norn is, of course, you know, the Praetor that is in mono white. This is, you know, the mono white Praetor. You got it. Also a Phyrexian Praetor. This follows what the previous Praetors have been lately. On top of that, like the other Praetors, there's an upside for you and a downside that is somewhat, you know, the other opposite end of that for the opponents. Now, does this feel like it could be an Elish Norn design? I personally might be wrong on this, but to me, uh, it doesn't really feel like it. I mean, yes, okay, the previous Elish Norn, we'll get to here in a bit, also dealt with, you know, pumping your creatures and shrinking your opponent's creatures. 
But this just kind of feels, and I think actually Eddie might have summed this up best kind of with his point, um, feels too small of a card in effect for such a big character. Elish Norn is one of the biggest threats in the multiverse, and, and yeah, I, I think it just doesn't, it doesn't feel nearly as threatening as it should. Not that you can't do some very powerful things with this, but it just doesn't really have that Praetor feel. Now, could they take, you know, the Praetors in a different direction? I mean, Shieldred went from a, uh, you know, a very high converted mana cost Praetor to now just a four mana cost Praetor. So yes, I mean, obviously they can take that down, but this one just feels even kind of more like a step down than that. I never really thought that we'd see a three mana Phyrexian Praetor. Now, could I be wrong on that? Yeah, I definitely could be. At the end of the day though, with everything taken into account, it just doesn't seem like this one is real. It seems again, a bit too, you know, circumstantial that, you know, it's using the art that was just released and this card just, you know, oh, we just happened to find this specific one that's using that art that again is key set art, uh, which, you know, it might not be, uh, you know, actually used in the actual set. So yeah, if I had to lean one way or the other, I would say that this is not real. Now, that being said, as I've said plenty of times, I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong and this could be very real. So just in case, I am gonna be going through some cards that would work well with this version of Elishnorn Legion Machinist. Now, again, please, 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 please keep in mind, this has not been confirmed to be a real card. And again, many players out there, including myself, think it's probably a fake. But if it ends up being real and confirmed to be an actual card, there are going to be some cards that you're going to want to keep in mind that would work well with this card. Okay, so really quick again, whenever your opponents have creatures come into play, their creatures get smaller and it might even get taken out as well if you can get enough creatures into play under their control. But yeah, so find ways to actually give them creatures. The cards like a crow and horse, benevolent offering an alliance of arms. A crow and horse is a zero four defender when it enters the battlefield and opponent gains control of it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a one one white soldier creature token. So you essentially give someone a horse and they give you and your other opponents soldiers, which of course are going to shrink their creatures while also pumping yours. Speaking of which, there's benevolent offering. Choose an opponent, you and that player each create three one one white spirit creature tokens with flying. So essentially this is a boost, you know, plus three, plus three to your creatures on top of, you know, giving you three tokens and then a minus three, minus three to your opponent's creatures, which of course can help take out a lot of things. And keep in mind, since this is an instant, you can utilize this in a lot of sneaky ways. And then Alliance at Arm says, starting with you, each player may pay an amount of mana. Each player puts X one one white soldier creature tokens on the battlefield or X the total amount of mana paid this way. Now this, you might have to politic a bit to actually have other players actually put mana into because, well, they're going to be taking out the wrong creatures. But if say someone doesn't have any creatures, they might be willing to help put mana into this to take out another opponent's army. Regardless, it's something that you can just put a lot of mana into to pump your creatures a ton and make a ton of tokens as well. Moving on, you can also utilize a card like Suzer Priest to take your opponents down in a different way. Whenever another creature is battlefield under your control, you gain one life. And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. So you get an even bigger benefit when your creatures come into play, padding your life total, and you get to take your opponents down whenever creatures come into play. Whether again, that's, you know, creatures just they have enter the battlefield on their control on their terms, just, you know, normally throughout the game. Or again, ones that, you know, force into play under their control, like Benevolent Offering or Crow and Horse. Of course, in Mono White, you've got plenty of other ways to make a ton of tokens, including some creatures that can make a ton of tokens like Geist Honored Monk, Capital Watch, and Reverend Hoplite. Geist Honored Monk has Vigilance, and its power and are each equal to the number of creatures you control, so this can be huge, and when it enters the battlefield, you get two 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. So, just by having this come into play with those tokens, it's going to be plus three, plus three until I turn for your creatures. And then Captain the Watch is a 3-3 three, three Vigilance, it gives other soldier creatures you control plus one, plus one, and Vigilance, and on top of that, when it enters the battlefield, you get three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. So, this one comes into play with essentially, you know, four creatures in total, so plus four, plus four to all your creatures, and of course, you know, those tokens are actually going to be more deadly, having, you know, basically being two twos with Vigilance, which of course can be pumped even more with Elish Nord. Next up, Reverend Hoplite has Ventures Battlefield, creating a number of 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens equal to Devotion to White, and yeah, in a mono white deck, we're going to have plenty of Devotion to White, so we can make a lot of creatures with this and have a massive pump effect for our team. 
Next up, another kind of creature that you might want to consider is actually one that can bounce back to your hand, like White Mane Lion. It has flash and when enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So this one can, you know, bounce another creature or actually again itself back to your hand. So this can just basically be like a two mana pump spell for your team that you can play whenever you need to. So it can be a fantastic combat trick or again, a kind of like a mana dump in a way if you really need to, you know, pump your team a lot. You can just dump a lot of mana into this, get your commander's trigger a ton and pump your team to make them massive. Also keep in mind that again, it is an ETB trigger, so you can utilize blink effects like, you know, Flicker of Fate to help you out as well. It says Exaltar Creature or an Enchantment that returns the battlefield under its owner's control. Keep in mind that this doesn't say it has to be one of your creatures or enchantments, so yeah, I mean, you can blink one of yours to make your army bigger, or blink one of your opponent's creatures to make their army smaller. Speaking of which, there's Sudden Disappearance, which says Exalt all non-land permanent target player controls, then return the Exalt cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this can be a very weird board wipe in a way by, you know, basically blinking your opponent's army and bringing them back for them to all get incredibly small. On the other end of things, you can actually make your army even bigger with other effects like Valor Nacros, Cathar's Crusade, and Intangible Virtue. Valor Nacros is basically the exact same thing as Elshorn's Trigger. Whenever a creature is battlefield under control, a creature you control get plus plus one until end of turn. So of course, doubling up on that can be very effective. In an even bigger way though, there's Cathar's Crusade, which says whenever a creature is battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. So this is a permanent pump effect essentially, again, getting counters on your creatures. This can really add up throughout the game. Speaking of adding up, yeah, you've got access to a lot of great anthems like Intangible Virtue, Creature tokens you control get plus plus one and have vigilance. With this kind of a build, yeah, you're probably gonna have a lot of creature tokens, so this can really help you out. And speaking of creature tokens, well, of course, we've got plenty of ways that we can make them as well with some other effects like Blessed Sanctuary, God Eternal Oketra, and Oketra's Monument. Blessed Sanctuary says, prevent all non-combat damage to be dealt to you and creatures you control. On top of that, whenever a non-token creature is battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white unicorn creature token. So now essentially all of our creatures come in with another creature, which of course can pump our army even more. Speaking of which, there's God Eternal Oketra, which says whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. This can help us make a massive army throughout the game, and again, that army is going to be very deadly. Four fours with Vigilance, that can add up a lot. And smaller creatures can really help out as well, though. Their Catcher's Monument, white creature spells you cast cost once to cast, yeah, that can be very helpful. On top of that, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one -one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. So yeah, all these can be great ways to get additional value out of our creatures, getting more and more creatures in play, and getting more and more triggers off of Elish Norn. But again, like I said, please take all of that with a grain of salt because, again, this very well might not be an actual card. In fact, again, if I had to guess if it's an actual card or not, I would lean on the side of it not being one. That being said, of course, I have been wrong before, and if it is, yeah, I mean, make sure you keep those cards in mind, but we might not know if this is an actual card for quite some time. So please, please, please keep that in mind before actually picking up any cards to work around this supposed commander that, again, might not be an actual real commander. But if it ends up being a real commander and you just came back to this episode to see what cards I talked about, um, yeah, there is a link below that has the list of the cards I talked about on this episode. So yeah, I put that in there just in case. And of course, I mean, I actually, you know, I talked about the cards just in case that work well with it. So yeah, you know what I mean? And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you, so make sure you comment below and let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.